give to my bank account, I can transfer funds. Uh, predominantly what we used to talk about, most of the, uh, you know, the services that are available to me, which I can actually traditionally go to an office or going somewhere and doing it, I can pretty much do it online. And, and thanks to the, the services economy that we are in today, which is the services economy. And uh, typically, if, if, if uh, you are looking at it, um, it's, it's just transforming the way we do business. Cloud services and, and cloud is really enabled, right? Um, if you are looking at uh, you know Intel and what we are envisioning is uh, over the course of around four years, which is in, by end of this decade, uh, there will be around almost around 50 billion devices. Okay, this device could be all the way from your phones and it could be all the way to uh, connected cars and, and everything in between, right? And then they are going to create this massive uh, amount of data. And they are going to create a significant service up to almost like 4 to 15 billion, right? And then uh, finally, everything is possible or only possible due to the infrastructure uh, which is cloud. Because the amount of data or amount of, uh, you know, a server or infrastructure requirement that you will need uh, is going to be phenomenal. What are some of the, uh, you know, key growth factors or more things that we see? Uh, Move to cloud computing. I, I think you know, Piyush also talked about it. Uh, we all see this in day by day with the amount of services, uh, you know, whether it's a G2C, whether it's a B2C, or you know, whatever, it, it's phenomenal. The second one is transformation of the network. Uh, if you really look into the amount of the 4G and then the, the amount of the data and the bandwidth that is required to do some of those things, uh, you have to have a transformation of data. And one of the key trends that what we are seeing is network virtual functionalization, okay, uh, which is high performance computing. Anywhere from a weather prediction, which is how the monsoon is going to be, you know, whether my car, if it crashes at 60 kilometers per hour, you know, am I going to, you know, survive or not, and how safe the car is, to genome mapping, to uh, whatever, uh, high performance computing is one other major factor, which is analytics, right? So these are the four, uh, you know, at least the mega trends that what we see uh, close to our goal. If you're, I mean, if you're looking at from a private and a hybrid cloud, right? Um, the idea was, you know, traditional IP, you know, you have to look into standardization and then the consolidation, right? And then once you get there, the next question is virtualizing your uh, infrastructure. That's where the virtualization comes in, automation comes in, and some amount of orchestration. Um, and, and our team actually worked with many of the banks and then many of the uh, institutions. When they went virtual, you know, they actually saw performance degrading. Right, they are saying, hey, I was getting so much and now I am really not getting that. And we basically use the hardware assisted virtualization features, etc. And this I am talking about in a few years back. Everybody looks into, should I go into a public cloud or should I go into a private cloud? What kind of uh, services that I can have to be in my own data center versus you know, how much I want to go in, this, uh, you know, in the cloud. Then we read, you know, a few years back there was a lot of people thinking, well, okay, what will happen to my data? What happened to my security? What happened? I think a lot of it is now almost, in, I think, you know, they're as secure as this. But there's still, there are some fundamental ways by which people are going to decide, you know, is it really core of my, you know, um, uh, business? If then they would like to keep things in private, but most of the other business enablers or, you know, others, they'll try to put it to a public, uh, you know, cloud.